Google said these are the best keyboards, but they lied to me. You guys are always asking me what the best mechanical keyboards are, but today I'm gonna leave that to the experts. Google. Ooh, the six best mechanical keyboards. And it was updated a week ago or two. These picks look pretty good. Let's buy everything. First up, we have the Steel Series Apex Pro. Rating says that it's the best gaming mechanical keyboard. The link on their website brought me to the Best Buy page, which has a full-size version for a whopping $165.99. But I was smart. I went to Amazon and bought it refurbished for $128.99. So quick tip, if you want to buy something for cheaper, get it refurbished. Well, let's open this bad boy up. Ugh, it's just dangling there. And this screen thingy is kind of cool, but it seems a little unnecessary. And on the back, it has all of these cable routings for this big, thick cable. The fanciest part is this. It comes with a magnetic wrist rest. Ooh. Okay, let's plug it in. There's two ends. One's for the keyboard and one is for the USB pass-through right here. RGB! These keycaps are a little, ooh, they're so slimy feeling. For a keyboard that's worth $200, you would think they would come with some fancy keycaps, but they don't. But look at this screen. What's it do? Should I read the manual? No. No manual. Well, let's see what I can do with this screen. So it has a scroll wheel. You can change the volume. There's an illumination option. There's presets. This one is called Haze. Very cool. This one's called Coast and Vapors. So there's a lot of RGB options for all you gamers out there. These are presets, but there's also custom ones that you can set using this wheel. Ooh. The coolest feature about this keyboard is that you can change the actuation distance using just this wheel. Right now it's five, but I'm gonna make it zero. Okay, one. I made it one. You just have to click it a little bit. Okay, it doesn't feel like it's, it's different. Let me make it really high. That was one. This is ten. Oh gosh, you have to hold it like this like how my grandma types. And it has this really cool feature. Every time you press, it like registers how deep you press. If you're a gamer where you actually rely on the responsiveness of your keyboard, changing it to one is OP. Here's how it sounds. Okay, it's not bad. For this keyboard, honestly, I'd give it like a eight out of 10. If you can afford it, and if you really care about gaming. Ratings gave this keyboard a 9.5 out of 10 for gaming, but an eight for typing and an eight for programming. So it's pretty close to what I'm rating it. Also, you can download the software and put some dank memes on your screen, like a Nyan Cat. Whatever else pictures you wanna put on there, that's appropriate. Next K bar, the Logitech G413. Oh, this thing looks super outdated. This is their budget pick, so let's see how much it costs. $59.99? That's not budget. Most people would say that's quite an expensive keyboard because for $25 less dollars, you can get some really cool options. Probably with more features too. This budget pick is a little bit disappointing. It's outdated and it's not budget. Let's see how good this thing actually is. And because $70 wasn't budget, I bought this refurbished as well. There it is again, a non-detachable cable. There's accessories in here. I wonder what it comes with. You've got gamer keycaps, a keycap puller. One, two, three, four, five, and gaming keys and gaming keys. Yeah. This thing's surprisingly sturdy feeling. It's really heavy. I thought it would be all plastic for how cheap it is, but it's pretty nice. There it is again, USB pass through. But this one's on the right side. Let's plug it in. I think it's got RGB or I hope it does. So I think it's only red. I guess it's okay. For $70, I think it's a little expensive, especially with these thick cables that you can't remove, but it's sturdy. And this is what it sounds like. What in the world? This just feels weird. What switches are these? What is this? It's got Romer G switches and it's super scratchy feeling. I'm not sure if it's mechanical or not, but there's a spring in there and moving parts. The stabilizer suck and it's got a weird stepped caps lock that I haven't seen ever. But look, it turns on a light. There's some media keys. What's this one do? Uh, oh, 
beautiful, just brightness. Overall, I think it's overpriced for what you get. It's dirty and it's Logitech, but for $50, you can get something actually mechanical and hot swap and RGB and wireless and everything. It's not worth it. Next up is the Ducky One 2, the best mechanical keyboard for typing. It's just like the Ducky One 2 Mini, except not mini. It's a lot bigger. If you don't know what the Ducky One 2 Mini is, it's a super popular 60% keyboard from like two years ago, popularized by Ninja. And this is its less popular sibling, the Ducky One 2. I don't have super high hopes for this one, but it is their best pick for typing, so we'll see how it goes. Okay, it's out of stock, but there's another one right here for $144. That's a really steep price for a keyboard. Let's just get it. <laughs> we ended up getting the TKL version. I'm not saving money. <laughs> Ooh, it's got Kale Box Brown switches. It looks exactly like a Ducky One Too Mini, except bigger. We even have a fancy space bar. We get a fancy keycap puller and not a fancy cable, but at least it's detachable. So far, this is the best item on the list. It even comes with cool blue keycaps and you can swap them out. And the black space bar if you don't like a fancy one. I'm gonna plug it in and I get to even use my own cable. Finally, some RGB. The switches are not hot swappable, and for $146, that's a pretty big deal. But Ducky's releasing a new lineup where they are hot swap. Yay, updates! Kale Box Browns. It sounds really nice, and it feels really nice, and it looks really nice. This one's probably the best one on the list so far, but it's still super pricey and outdated. I'm gonna give this keyboard a 9 out of 10, but I wish it was hot swappable. That's all. Next key bar! This is the Kinesis Freestyle Edge RGB, the ergonomic alternative, but it's still meant for gaming. Let's see how much this thing costs. It's $199. I feel like if you're looking for an ergonomic option, going the split route is a bit extreme and it's $200. You can do something better like get a wrist rest or change your setup for something much less and it'll probably help you more and not feel so weird. But let's take a look at it. Time to unbox the ergonomic option and this thing is chonky and I need a knife. <laughs> A lot in here. Ooh, it opens like a book. Ta -da! A lot of packaging. This is one big keyboard. This is only half the keyboard. This is the other half. And there they are again. Non-detachable cables. But this thing's got double the number of them. This is a mess. The split design's pretty cool though. Big of <laughs> There's no feet. I think the feet are an additional cause. So instead of tenting it, it's flat on the floor. I feel ripped off. And we didn't buy a refurbish. This was full price. But these are removable with a tenting kit. So now it's just flat on the desk. And it's huge! Look how much space this takes up. You can't say it's an ergonomic alternative when it's not actually ergonomic. How much do these tenting kits even cost? I hate typing on these. You have to buy something called the lift kit. It costs an additional $30. So for an actual ergonomic experience, you're gonna be paying $230, not 200. It's a lot of money. For a gaming keyboard, ideally you should be able to just get rid of one half of it and game, but it's not detachable. So now it awkwardly goes here while we have this cable mess everywhere. While well, you game like this. For I think $25, you can get a one-handed gaming keyboard on Amazon that's more comfortable than this thing. My rating on this thing is a 4 out of 10. It's not ergonomic, at least not with what's included in the package. And it's a steep learning curve, especially for typing and gaming. And you can get something much cheaper. Next up is a Razer keyboard. This could be really interesting since rating says it's their best wireless mechanical keyboard. This keyboard comes in at a steep price of $179.99. My poor wallet. Oh, how thou must cry. <laughs> All the keyboards on this list are like $150 and up. There's so many good options on the internet for a lot cheaper. But this one's wireless though, so it's got that going for it. 
Let's open it up. Typical razor packaging, very green. And it's got the classic razor green switches. <laughs> Wait. Isn't it wireless? Isn't this supposed to be wireless? Did we get the wrong one? We got the wrong one. <laughs> this is not the best wireless mechanical keyboard because this one has a non-detachable wire. But for a price of $180, you can buy the wireless version and try that out for yourself. That's really awkward. <laughs> and it comes with a wrist rest. A very plastic wrist rest. No cushion. I'm disappointed. Wait. This is a super lightweight keyboard! I expected more from Razer. Even the budget option felt more sturdy than this. This feels like a big hunk of plastic. And I expected more from this. This wrist rest is not magnetic. I can't believe it. this isn't magnetic. I'm disappointed. Look at this cool feature. A wheel. That's literally the biggest wheel on a keyboard that I've ever seen. And the loudest one too. It's like revving your engine. Okay, I'll stop now. And clickies! I would rate this keyboard a 5 out of 10. Very loud, terrible wrist rest, and it just doesn't feel very good. It feels like plastic. Cheap. Not cheap. Expensive plastic! Next keyboard! Alright, they have this compact alternative called the Obens Lab and Pro 2. This was another super popular keyboard like two years ago when Fortnite was at its most popular. It cost $90. Okay, that's not bad. That's actually their cheapest keyboard. Cheap. Whoa! Time to open up their cheapest option and compact alternative. Look at the packaging. Persist in change. Make it different. I have no idea what that means. Brown too. A beautiful 60% keyboard. And if you compare it to the, the other thing, the rate don't don't look don't show them the floor. That's bad. You were pointing that. <laughs> You're not supposed to show it to them. This is what Betty does the No, no one needs to see the floor. Sure. And row two comes with keycap puller. Razor didn't even come with one. And colorful keycaps, very pretty. And a red cable. The second detachable keyboard on this list. And listen to how it sounds. Wow, that sounds really good actually. Ooh. It's supposed to be wireless too. It's got Bluetooth. Ooh, ooh, okay. This is the prettiest keyboard on the list. Look at this RGB. It's got PBT keycaps that are shine through. Only this and the ducky have that. The Ampro 2 is really good and I would rate it 8 out of 10, but in 2021, it's still a little outdated. There's no hot swap. It does have Bluetooth though, but it could be better. Now for my favorite part, where I get to give you my favorite keyboard picks. The picks that ratings had, they honestly weren't that bad, but they were just outdated and really pricey. So I'm gonna give you some better options. For some solid mid-price keyboards that are not super expensive, I highly recommend the Royal Clutch RK84. It's wireless, hot swap, and sounds great out of the box. I did upgrade this one though. And another one I really like is the LTC Nimbleback. Also hot swap and wireless and sounds amazing out of the box as well. This one's modded too. It sounds like nothing right now. And the best part, they both have RGB. If you're looking for a really, really budget option, but you still want mechanical switches, I recommend the Red Dragon K552. And this one's super modded as well. And you can tell I really love these keyboards because they're all modded. Really, really modded. This one sounds great. All we did was lube the switches and everything else. We did everything. Don't, don't pay attention to that. <laughs> And if you're interested in custom keyboards, I've heard the Keychron Q1's really good, but I haven't looked at it yet. But my personal favorite is the KBD67 Lite. Yeah! You can find all of the keyboards that I talked about linked down below, and thank you for watching!